Hey there everybody, T-Shirt Booth here for gshelper.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to use writable tables to draw out a path and then have your actor follow that path that was drawn out with your touch. Um, the first thing we're going to need to do is create two tables. Um, I'm going to hit the plus sign and I'm going to create both my tables here and I'm going to call this one path and I'm going to call this one master. Um, and the reason why we need the master and the path is because once we draw a path and it runs and we want to draw a new path, we need to copy the master over to the path so it basically starts it from scratch again. So we're going to go in here and we're going to need uh, two columns and they'll both be real. And we'll call the first one X and the second one Y. Um, we don't need to make rows because we'll add the rows later, but basically um, this is going to record the X and the Y of your um, touch um, as you're drawing the path. Now we're going to hit back and go into master and we're going to do the exact same thing. Two columns, both real, X and Y. Alright, now we're going to go home and go into our scene and I'm going to create an actor. Uh, let me just go and add some color to the scene here. Let's give it a nice uh, purple effect here. Um, and we're going to go into our actor, and I'll make this yellowy orange. I'll put them on the scene here. Okay, so this is our actor that we're going to use to follow a path. Now let's create two attributes here. And the uh, first one will be an index attribute. Hit the plus sign index and we'll just simply call it index okay um, now we're going to go into our actor and um, we're going to need a couple attributes here I believe um, no maybe just uh, one attribute and uh, we'll call it an index attribute and we'll call it uh, step count Now we're going to use that to, um, once we record the path, we're going to use that to keep track of where the actor is in the path. Um, so we're going to create a rule here. And um, your game may be set up a lot differently. Um, this is just basically for an example. Uh, I'm going to use when uh, mouse, button, um, mouse button is down. Um, you may do when touch is pressed. Uh, who, who knows what you're going to do. But for ours, we'll use touch is down. Um, and you can change that later on. What we're going to say is we're going to say copy table. Now, we already know that the first time we play, the table's empty anyways. But we're going to do this regardless. So that way, the next time, the next time, the next time after, um, it'll already be set up. So we're going to tell it to copy our uh, master table to our path table, uh, which gives it a fresh one every single time we play. Um, next, we're going to do a change attribute. And we're going to change game dot index to one, um, and this will start the index pattern off at one. And then um, again, once we're done and we come back and try again, even if the index is at 200, it'll change it back to one to start all over again. Now we're going to use a timer. I'll put a timer in there, and I'm going to say every zero seconds run to completion and this is where we're, re we're going to record the um, the players touch as they're drawing the path so we're going to say every zero seconds we want to um, I guess we want to change table value so let's find that change table value and we're going to choose our path table not the master table and um, for row we're going to choose game index and as we first start, it's going to be 1, so it's going to use row 1 at first. And we know column 1 is our x value, so we'll use that, and then we'll say game, or sorry, device, mouse, position, x. And then we'll hit the plus sign, because we want, we want to do the uh, y value too, so we'll do column 2. And we're going to change it to device, mouse, position, y. So what this is doing is every zero seconds it's going to record where the mouse is. Okay, I'm just going to shrink this down a little bit right there. And now we're going to do a change attribute. 
and um, we're gonna we're, we're gonna put it right inside the timer, and we're gonna say change attribute game index to game index plus one. So the first time it's going to record at index 1, the x and y, and then it's going to change it to index 2, so that way the next time it records, it'll record in the next row. Um, and it will constantly keep doing that um, as we go along. Now, in order to make it record in the next row, we're going to have to add a new row to, um, to the table. So we're going to say add remove row, and again I'll put that in the timer just underneath, and we'll do it in our path um, table. And we're going to say add row at the end. Um, so if it's on row 4, it'll add a row 5. If it's on row 5, it'll add a row, row 6. Um, and then that's going to be it for the recording of the, the path. So now what we want to do is we want to tell it that once we're done drawing a path, we want it to follow that path. So we're going to create a new rule. And for this one, we're going to say when mouse button is up and again you'll change this to you know suit your needs but for mine uh, mouse button is up will be more than adequate and um, we're going to change attribute and we're going to change self step count to game index so basically when we're drawing a path, we're going to have an index number. Let's say it's uh, 205. Well, now when it's time to run it, we're going to copy that 205 number into the step uh, the step count. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change attribute game index back to 1. And then we're going to create a rule. I'm going to put my rule in here. And we're going to say if attribute game index is less than and we're going to do self step count minus one and that's going to keep track of our steps as it's going um, and we're going to tell it to move to each one of those step locations so we're going to put a timer in here. And now I found every 0.05 to be an adequate uh, time frame for this. We're going to interpolate. And put interpolate in here. And we're going to interpolate self position x to, and this is where the magic happens, we're going to change it to table cell value and for table we'll use our game path table for row we're going to use game index and for column we'll use one because that's our X column and then we're going to change duration to 0 0.05 and now I'm going to create another interpolate for the Y and we're going to interpolate self position y to table cell value and again we'll use our game path table for row we're going to use our game index and for the y column we will use 2 and then what we're going to do is we're going to change attribute again inside the timer we're going to change game index to game index plus one and um, that's pretty much it I'm gonna hit OK and I'm gonna hit preview so now you'll see when I select and I drag I'm gonna make some loops and stuff and then end up back up top here now when I let go you see and it's following everything that I did now it's gonna make some loops soon no, that's not really what's supposed to happen. Let's see here. Loop and over here. No, I think I messed something up here. Let's see here. Ah, oh, there we go. Interpolate. Uh, this interpolate has to also be 0 0.05. So there we go. Now we'll hit preview and I'll try that now. So go down, make some loops, finish here. 
Perfect. Now I can select again, go up here, go down. And every time it follows the path that I made. And I can go for a long time. I can just keep going, going, some back and forth, and end up back in the middle. And that's it. So that's all you need to know on how to draw a path and have an actor follow that path in Game Salad. Uh, head on over to gshelper.com. Underneath the video, you'll be able to download this project file so you can play around with it yourself. And um, don't forget to thumbs up the video in YouTube. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.